How do you know I was staring at your freckles? <laughs> Everyone does. It's my fate, I'm afraid. A terrible fate. But I'm resigned to it. Someone's supposed to meet you, young lady. Yes, the Cuthberts. Do you know them? Marilla and Matthew, why, yes. They're adopting me. Oh. Mrs. Spencer sent me over from Nova Scotia. She was to come too, but she was delayed in Charlottetown. She says she's following on the morning train. Well, won't you come into the ladies' waiting room? I'm sure the Cuthberts will be along in a bit. No. I prefer to stay outside. <coughs> Yes, I suppose so. How long before the 530 train comes along? Uh, 530 just pulled out, but there's a passenger dropped off for you. But uh, I asked her to go to the ladies' waiting room, but she informed me frankly that she preferred to stay outside. More scope for the imagination, she said. It's a case, I should say. <laughs> I'm not expecting a girl, it's a boy I've come for. He should be here. Is there another train? <laughs> uh, no, last one for the day. Mrs. Spencer was to bring him over from Nova Scotia, pardon me. Yeah, I guess there's some mistake. But the girl says Miss Spencer won't be along with the first train in the morning, since you're often on long because she knew you were expecting her. But I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I know about. And I haven't got any more orphans concealed here about <laughs> I don't understand. Uh, maybe they were out of the friend of boys you wanted. <laughs> Wait, where are you going? I'm going to lock up. I'm going to suffer. But I... What? <laughs> Children. 
Well, I'm, I'm pretty good, but I was worried about you, Marilla. I, I saw Matthew taking off in such a hurry for town, I thought maybe he was after the doctor. Oh, no. I'm quite well, thank you. Hmm. Then, where was Matthew off to in such a hurry? <laughs> he was going to Bright River. Bright River? Yes. Yeah. Oh? Well, if you must know, we've decided to get an orphan from the orphan asylum on the mainland. He's coming by train this evening. Are you in earnest, Marilla? Yes, well, of course. Well, Earth put such a notion into your head. Well, we've been thinking about it for some time. All winter, in fact. Uh, Mrs. Spencer said she was going over to the mainland to get a girl from that orphanage asylum in Hopewell, and, well, Matthew, you know, is getting up in years. He's not as spry as he used to be, and his heart troubles him a great deal. So, you know how terrible hard it is to get hired help, so we said, in the end, we, we told Mrs. Spencer to pick us out a boy when she got herself a girl. I'll just be plain, Marilla, that I think this is a, a foolish idea, a risky idea. You don't know what you're getting. I, you know nothing about him, nothing about his disposition, what his parents are like, how he'll turn out. Why, well, I just read in the paper last week about a couple west of the island who brought a boy home from the orphan asylum, and he set their house on fire. Set it on purpose, Marilla. Nearly burned them to a crisp in your fit. <laughs> if you had asked my opinion on this matter, Marilla, which you did not do, <laughs> I would have said, for mercy's sakes, not to think of such a thing, that's what. Well, I don't deny there's something in what you say, but Matthew has his heart set on it, and so I decided to give in. You know, it's so seldom that he sets his mind to something that. I feel it's my duty to give in. Well, I hope it turns out all right. But don't blame me if he burns Green Gables down. Or puts a strict nine in the well. I've heard of a, a child in New Brunswick. Orphan asylum child who did just that, and the whole family died of fearful agonies. But it was a girl in that instance. <laughs> We're not getting a girl. <laughs> Is that your name? 
No. <laughs> that is exactly my name. I would just love to be called Cordelia. It's such a perfectly elegant name. I don't know what on earth you mean. <laughs> if Cordelia isn't your name, what is? Anne Shirley. But please, please do call me Cordelia. It can't matter much to you what you call me if I'm only to be here for a short while, can it? And Anne is such an unromantic name. Unromantic fiddlesticks. Why, Anne is a real good, plain, sensible name. Well, if you must call me Anne, please call me Anne spelled with an E. <laughs> what difference does it matter how it's spelled? Oh, it makes such a difference. It looks so much nicer. <laughs> a and N. It looks dreadful. A and N E. It looks so much more distinguished. <laughs> if you only call me Anne spelled with an E, I shall try to reconcile myself to not being called Cordelia. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going out. Anybody else but you. She brought up her girl for herself. She's only five and beautiful with nut brown hair. She's not homely and freckled and red headed like I am. If I were very beautiful with nut brown hair, would you keep me? No. <coughs> we need a boy to help Matthew on the farm. A girl would be of no use to us. Oh, take off your hat. I'll fix you a plate. Oh, I couldn't eat. I am in the depths of despair. <laughs> Can you eat when you are in the depths of despair? I've never been in the depths of despair. <laughs> Thank you. 
garden. Marilla is quite the gardener, and you'll have to see her garden after breakfast. Oh, I don't dare go out. If I can't stay here, then there's no use in my loving green gables. If I go out there and plant all those flowers and trees, I'll not be able to help but love it. No, I realize now that my dream is over. I am assigned to my fate now. I have never heard anyone talk so much as she does. <laughs> Since you're so bent on talking, sit down and tell us about yourself. Oh, what I imagine about myself is ever so much more interesting. No, no, no. Just stick to the bold facts. <laughs> well, I was born in Bolingbrook, Nova Scotia. My father was a teacher named Walter Shirley, and my mother's name was Bertha. Oh, aren't they lovely names? I'm so glad my parents had nice names. It's all I have of them. My mother died of fever when I was just three months old, and my father died four days afterwards. I had no relatives nearby, so I went to live with a Mrs. Thomas until I was eight. Her husband was a drunkard. He was killed falling under a train one night. His mother took them in. They didn't want me. Since I was good with children, I was sent to live with a Mrs. Thomas who had three sets of twins. Oh I like babies, but in moderation. <laughs> <laughs> when her husband died, Mrs. Hammond spread her children out among the land of relations, and I was sent to live with the orphan asylum. <coughs> Matthew! Grandma! Oh, Mrs. Blewett. She said you had a little girl you didn't want, and as I sure could use the help, I heard over here for you give away to someone else. Give me away? Yeah, uh, Mrs. Blue. Oh, uh, they don't look like there's much to you, but I suppose I ought to take her off your hands. My twins are awful fresh. <laughs> Her. 
When I fail, there'll be plenty of time to throw your oar in. <laughs> I finished the dishes, Miss Cuthbert. I didn't break a one. Well, that's good news. Well, Anne, we might as well tell you. We've decided to keep you. That is, if you can be a good girl and show yourself grateful. What's going to say? What's the matter now? I'm crying. You think why? <coughs> glad this can be. Oh, I'm glad this is the right word at all. Well, oh. this is oh. so <laughs> Sit down and control yourself. I am afraid that you laugh and cry and talk far too easily. <laughs> what am I to call you? Shall I always say Miss Cuthbert? Can I call you Aunt Marilla? No. <laughs> call me plain Marilla. I don't like people calling me Miss Cuthbert. It makes me feel nervous. <laughs> well, I would love to call you Aunt Marilla. It would make me feel as though I really belong to you. I'm not your aunt. <laughs> and I don't believe in calling people names that don't belong to them. Well, we could imagine that you're my aunt. <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs>
she said you were homely and red-headed. You said so yourself. Oh, but there's such a difference in between saying a thing and hearing other people saying it. <laughs> well, you made a fine exhibition out of yourself and gave Rachel Lynn a good story to tell everyone, and she'll tell everyone, believe me. <laughs> <laughs>
Lady Zade's society meeting tomorrow afternoon. Oh, so do I. We can go together and the girls could visit here. What a perfectly delightful idea. Oh, yes. Well, I guess there couldn't be any harm in it, as long as you girls behave yourself. Oh, we will, Mother, I promise. Well, thank you for the recipe, Marilla. Oh, you're welcome. I hope you enjoy it. <coughs> Ready to confess. All right, a 
friends here then. I took the brooch just as you said. I thought I could put it back before you and Matthew came home. So I put it on and pretended to be a princess. And I went out to wander over my kingdom. As I was crossing over the moat, I took the brooch off to have another look at it. Oh, how it did sparkle in the moonlight. As I was leaning over the bridge, it slipped through my fingers and went down, down, down. <laughs> <laughs> All perfectly sparkling and sank forevermore in the lake of shining waters. That is terrible. And surely you are the wickedest girl I've ever heard of. Yes. Mm-hmm. 